Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy KRAS of 435. You already know what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be breaking shit down. What the fuck? Oh, no, I that. Alright, so we're gonna be talking about, um... Oh, wow. Is this, um, the, um, NIT? Yeah, this is probably MI MIT, right? Yeah, let me check that shit out real quick. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously they win. Because they suck dick. All right, but um, that's not what we're doing today. We're talking about the boy of all great skills in the basketball culture and the tribe. Everywhere you can talk about him, Lonzo Ball. We're going to break down everything about him. Um, we have a lot of talk about where he stands, where he's averaging points, assists, rebounds, and all this other shit. But but before we get into this. We're going to talk about, um, yeah, basically, like, uh, we're going to talk about this video and that video right there, because I think, um, you know, his father, he has, like, a lot of, like, uh, support for him, but I think it's more so, like, where does Lonzo stand to become a possible NBA, you know, number one draft pick of the 2017 NBA draft? Do I think Lonzo is a great player? Of course. Lonzo is, like, my nigga, day one. You know, like, basically repping out for Cali, doing what he has to do. And um, I think it's really crazy enough to say that um, Lonzo has a lot of support on his hands because, you know, that's his home state. And I think him going to UCLA was a great decision. I mean, if he had went to Kentucky or Duke, he, he would have had to compete up against higher, you know, ranked, you know, basketball players that were being picked for their positions. And it would have never been, you know, the type of basketball that we could see from him, you know, today. See, now, we're going to go off on this um, ESPN article that they were talking about. And this is actually pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> so, Charles Barkley and LeVar Ball, they were going at it. And I'm pretty sure that video is going to talk about them talking. But um, Charles Barkley said, better stick to eating those donuts. So, let's get right into it. Charles Barkley and LeVar Ball talk a lot of smack on Wednesday. Sir Charles... In issuing a one-on-one -on -one challenge to the father, yo, dude, I, dude, um, because I think we're gonna have to look at that uh, real quick because, um, because I think that actually <laughs> was going to be um a good, you know, matchup that they wanted to do because I saw Lavar play up against another guy, and dude, Lavar, he has a good shot, but I'm just surprised, like, of why, you know, for him. You know, he didn't join like the like basically the um, um NBA, and I mean, you know, he never he never like did anything in college. I knew about that, but um, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, let me uh, look at these um articles because I don't really care about Levar Ball, even though I hear a lot of people say like, yeah, he's just a wannabe uh, talk show, but I think like. Yeah, technically, he just doesn't have that type of, you know, caliber compared to all the other legends that were coming up in his time. But, um, hold on, before we head on with Lonzo, yeah, like, basically, after high school, ball played one season in college, 1987 to 88. So, technically, he didn't even go to, he didn't even go, he didn't go full out in college. He didn't even play at least, like, you know, a whole four years. Or decided to, to go straight into the draft. So it's like, why do you talk all this smack? But then again, you did pretty good for your children. So I can't really disagree with that. Like, it's really good that um <clears throat> that uh, Lonzo is pulling up his weight to become a good player. But let's just look at this. He played one season. Washington State averaged 2.2 to put the rebounds. He transferred in search for more playing time, but apparently didn't get it. Those are his only recorded, recorded stats. That same season, it should be noted that Jordan averaged uh, 35 points for the Chicago Bulls. Yes, LeVar Ball is ridiculous, brash, outspoken, absurd, comically unaware of what he's saying. He's also suggested in the interview that shoe companies wanting to sign his sons should give his family a billion dollars for marketing rights. <laughs> All right. He said a billion dollars. It has to be there. Ball said in the same interview. That's our number, a billion, straight out of the gate. And you don't have to give it to me all up front. Give us 100, 100 million over 10 years. But he's a good sports dad because he honestly cares about his kids. So even if his words are a bit um, outlandish. So, you know, 
LeVar Ball is a good player, and I think maybe the main reason why he decided to, you know, you know, go hard on his children because he wants the best for his children. And I'm not going to lie, Leandro is a great player. I love LaMelo. But Lonzo, like, with, with him being, like, 19, almost 20, or technically he could be 19 right now if he had his birthday. But um, just imagine, if you've seen him in the NBA by next year, Imagine this: Andrew Wiggins and Le and Lavar, or no, no, not Lavar, Lonzo Ball, going at it. If Lonzo's on a good team where he can actually put in more time into his skills and actually work on what he wants to be, then dude, he's gonna be something. But I think like my top five teams for Lonzo. Just hear me out. It doesn't have to be final, but but I'd say number one. Um, the Los Angeles Lakers, because I understand why a lot of people would give me a lot of heat for this, but um, I think that the Lakers need to find Lonzo in that spot because I think D'Angelo, he needs to have another guy with him to give him, you know, like the right, you know, um, uh, how should I say it, like the right shooting, like, like, like the right shooting, you know, firepower in which Lonzo has, but you know, obviously he has like a ton of work to do as far as, you know, getting his shot up to a to a good like, you know, ninety ish overall if we were talking two K or whatever game. But I mean, if you look at it in real life, it's not even that good. It's like, yeah, he can bang it, but it's like how more consistent does he have to be in order to maintain a good shot, you know, like right like right to the to like the three point battle because obviously he needs to get that if he wants to get up to his level so i think like with that that would really boost up his uh, talents within the nba um number two team would be the brooklyn nets i say that because i think it would be really fun to see him play for brooklyn and brooklyn really needs a better point guard i think jeremy lynn would not really survive as much but i'm not saying that because because like my nigga lynn he's from he's from at like, the city anyway so <laughs> i mean Looking at Jeremy and looking at where he where he where he had his time in in the NBA, where he he's done a lot more than for what he can show, and and maybe or just correct me if I'm wrong about where Jeremy grew up on. I'm pretty sure it was in like the city. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, we'll talk about Jeremy Lin, like I because I, because I had some plans for talking about him, but um, no, nah, like plus I think Lonzo would really stand out to become a very you know good, you know, well-rounded player. Nobody want to be able to stop him. Um, just because I have a lot of, you know, focus on good teams that could be a, a from coming from an underdog trash team, basically from like a bad team to the best team ever. And I think the Nets would really fit well for him. Um, basically, some other teams that I would say that would be good for him would, would, would probably be... Um, uh, number three would be a little bit tricky. I want to say, um, the, oh man, it is so, that's what I'm saying. It is really bad to, to put, to put good teams on for Lonzo because he, because he wouldn't be able to beat out those players because he would have to learn from them before they decided to go to a superstar team. So I'm trying to find teams that would really work. But if you were to ask me, I probably say, you know, the third team would have to be, um, Maybe the, maybe like the Phoenix Suns. I say that because the Suns w w would be very dominant with him because he would have a better chance on getting a, getting a young squad with him and Booker and they want to be stopped. And I mean, it's really proven to even show that Booker has a very good three point shot. Just give him, just give him like a few more years to work on his game. And dude, that nigga will be taking over the shooting guard position. So, I mean, it's kind of like a young Kobe impression, but I wouldn't really want to say that with him, he's gonna take over his um his, his position as to be like one of the best shooting guards going to like the whole league. But if you were to really ask me, like, like I don't really mind seeing him play with Lonzo because it's it, it, like that's a good look you know what i'm saying like there's nothing bad on seeing that happen so, you know if you want to you know talk big men 
I think Marquise Chris should really take over that position. And um, I'd say it would be really good to see uh, like the level of caliber go with him, Marquise Chris, and maybe if Alex Len is healthy, he can stay there. And yeah, like that would be a fucking good team. And I mean, you know, like there's plenty of other teams I could go off on. Um, I was gonna say like would be a Bulls because I want Lonzo to come to to my team, obviously. But let's go with like the Knicks for number four. Um, the reason why I say like the number Oh, uh, basically the New York Knicks is because um I think Lonzo would have a good uh basically a good like uh, um atmosphere with New York and um Derrick Rose if we wanted to trade him away I like for Rose to go back to Chicago <laughs> I'm saying that because I love D Rose a lot but um no I think it would be really good because D Rose has such a good build you know for his um you know, for his, like, his talents to basically help out Chicago if that was to be the right move. But no, we decided to have Rajon Rondo because we obviously think it's better to, like, draft a guy or, no, 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 trade for a good player or, no, send over a good player to a bad team with Melo in which Melo could have just went straight to Cleveland if the Knicks didn't decide to do that, which personally to me, because I just think, like, um, that Phil Jackson just just really demoralized Melo to the point where he can't he can't play right, and he just knows what's wrong with the Knicks. And I think with Lonzo going to that team, it's really good. And I'd say that hey, if Rose wanted to stay, maybe put Rose at the two so he can just work on just shooting with the ball, and we don't need to complain about okay who's going to get more playing time, who's going to do this, this, and that. No, if you put Rose. Lonzo, or basically put Lonzo Rose, and at number three, if Melo wants to stay, that would be good, but um, I'd probably say at number three, you could trade away for maybe a possible star, or get um Harrison Barnes, like dude, I would love Harrison Barnes to come over to New York, that would be really good, yeah, and just keep the four and five, where you put three stops at the four, and I'd probably say for five, trade away for a good big man like, um, I don't know, maybe from like the Mavericks, like, uh, uh, Dwight Powell. He's, he's really, he's, he's very good. Or maybe even bring, bring Paul Gasol. You never know, or get LaMarcus. But, um, that's my number four. Number five, this is gonna be very controversial. I know I would get a lot of heat for it, but I would say possibly the 76ers. Um, just because I say this because the 76ers have a really good team, but if Lonzo were to go there, that would be a very deep team. Um, we could, we could have just said Miami to, to make it easier because Lonzo has a very dominant build to give Miami what he, what they want from him. And we all know with Pat Riley, he did the same thing with the Dwayne Wade, so why not with Lonzo? Lonzo's 6'6 or 6'7. But, I mean, would you want Lonzo Ball on, basically on a team that has a lot of potential to make it to a playoff run versus a team that has a lot of crappy players here and there, but it wouldn't really help out unless they get what they deserve in, in, you know, draft picks and all this other bullshit. So, I mean, we have a lot of talk to go over, and I think of Lonzo, his situation is very is very uh, difficult, but it's like we can't even think like that because we can't think that Lonzo's gonna be busting ass right away. We have to look at it like you know stat by stat and actually go down on where Lonzo stands. So uh, basically, let's just finish this article up. Um, it's always what we've said: Michael Jordan is the greatest player ever to play, except for Lavar. LeVar Ball, I mean, of course, who cares if Superman can fly at the speed of sound, impossible impossible strength, he, he still gets neutered by it by kryptonite, maybe Ball knows something we don't. Um, Alright, so, let's just see. Oh, yeah, 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 that was, like, that was just basically the um, article that I saw. But, um, if we go into this article, yeah, right here, right here. Once I found he averaged two points, two points a game, listen, uh, you need to slow your roll, Barkley said to Ball. He says, um, I didn't win a championship. I said to myself, I need to go back and Google this guy because maybe I missed the ball era. 
he was in, when he was dominating and winning championships on everywhere else. Listen, I'm too old and fat to play basketball, but I'll challenge Mr. Ball <laughs> to a one on one. How about that? And they said, um, or plus I think this is still Berkeley. Um, I don't even know how old he is. He's got to be around my age, but no guy who averages two two points a game can beat me at one on one. At one on one, I'm positive of that. Ball who played college, yada yada yada. Oh, really? He played at Cal State? Really? Wow, <laughs> that's that's terrible. But um, but no. Um, basically, he's telling USA that he's looking for a package shoe deal to um get over one billion worth 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 of dollars money to have a growed franchise for their team and then after that uh <laughs> coast to coast ball laughed off to bark his challenge as usual like like i mean he's he's lavar ball man we all have to look at him like he's like the biggest toughest guy on the planet which i think he's tough enough to even become like a, to become like a boxer if he wanted to take his route that way but um he said he wants to play one on one and all this he said he says, um, I have a few points. Who cares? Ball said, I know he don't want to play one on one because he's too big. He better stay behind the TNT thing and eat them donuts. <laughs> Dude, Barkley is like straight up OG. He does not give a fuck. Ball said Barkley used to be his favorite player, but now that title belongs to his three sons. <laughs> Leangelo will play for UCLA, UCLA next season. That's going to be crazy. Um, Lamelo Ball still has two more years of high school remaining. He's not my favorite player now, not because I don't like him. It's because my boys are my favorite players now. Ball said he'll be all right though. I, I'll send him some Krispy Kreme donuts and he'll be my friend again. <laughs> I mean, wait, hold on, let me check up on time. Lavar Ball is a great guy, and I really respect him to the point where he's a very conscious man, and he's tough. You know what I'm saying? I mean. This is what we want. We want basketball to become like boxing, where we have to talk about position. We have to talk about who's tougher on the court. We have to go back into where we were when we were slam dunking niggas that couldn't even get back up from like a, you know, like you know, from like a tough ass foul. So let's look at these videos. Um, we obviously have these two. Dude, I love this one and I like this one, and I think um. That one was like a more heated battle because that nigga was going crazy on LeVar. But um, let me just uh, keep that pause. Because, Coming this spring yeah, this, from the brand. You should never listen to me. But um, let's just listen. ESPN's Recruiting Nation alongside one of the best guards in the 2016 class, Lonzo Ball, after number one, Chino Hills. One here at the 2016 Spalding Hoopal Classic. Now we've heard you guys go up and down the floor, but for those who watched this team play today for the first time, how typical is a performance like this? You know, this is a normal night. You know, obviously we came out a little bit slow, yeah, I don't think it's but uh, we picked it up the second half and we got the job done. You are a UCLA commit, so for fans, what can they expect from you once you get on campus? Uh, just leadership, you know, come in and play the point guard. Um, I can provide, you know, passing, rebounding, scoring, and I'll just do everything I can to get into the national championship. From a personal development standpoint, where do you want to grow as a player in the next 10 months before you take the floor there? Uh, you know, just mostly mentally and physically. You know, I got to get a little bit stronger. Obviously, the next level is much stronger. But um, as long as I keep on um, leading, I should be all right. Now you've got a, a unique situation here with you know, relatives, brothers on the team, UCLA commits behind you. What's that like? You know, it's great. You know, we get to talk about it, and um, obviously at high school, and then we go back home and we can joke around about it and stuff. And um, you know, if we get a chance to play together, great. But if not, you know, we're all going to be there and it's going to be a great trend. What kind of pressure do you feel as the eldest brother of that trio? People coming out and seeing the same name on, on, on the back of the jerseys. Uh, you know, pressure, it don't really get to me like that. You know, my whole life I've always been in front. So um, I just go out and lead by example and hopefully they follow. He's Lonzo Ball headed to Westwood after this season. But for more coverage of basketball recruiting, you can search basketball recruiting on ESPN.com. All right, so after that, we're going to watch this one. For power. I just hate it how it doesn't compile all the way. Like, it's just so, like, really retarded. 
Uh, yes. I love it. See, I got everybody's creative juices flowing right now. Yeah, that's why they can go to Twitter and create something. Okay. Somebody catch on to one of those. So what is it like, though? I mean, we've seen you on tour. You've been on tour for pretty much tour. Tour, yes. <laughs> for pretty much the entire NCAA season. You got Charles Barkley talking about you. You're on this Everybody. show here. I mean, what is it like? You're like a pseudo celebrity now. In the Just restart, damn it. I hate it when it does not compile the graphics all the way through. Like, that. That is like the that is the shittiest thing that I hate at a fucking um OBS. It's uh, yes. I love it. See, I got everybody's creative juices flowing right now. Yeah, that's why they can go to Twitter and create something. Okay. Somebody catch on to one of those. So what is it like though? I mean, we've seen you on tour. You've been on tour for pretty much tour. Tour, yes, for pretty much the entire. In Damn, it's not even gonna go through. Okay. Uh I hate this. I hate it when my shit is It's a day season. You got Charles Barkley talking about you. You're on this Everybody. show here. I mean, what is it like? You're like a pseudo celebrity now, in a sense. Yeah. I've always been the same. It's just y'all following me with cameras. Mm. It's not going to compile all the way. I hate it when that happens. Not even compiling. Hate this shit. Alright, um. I don't think I can find any other video. Can't even. I can't even, like. Wow. This is just terrible. But, um. Shit. Mm, yeah, let me just try to look, like, look one up. Um. Obviously, I just wanted to see, like, what, like, the LeVar Ball skills. Did to market Marcellus Wiley. I guess like he did bust his ass or something to that degree, but um, if it's not gonna load, then I'll just make my final conclusion where I, I see Lonzo, you know, making his his route to the NBA. I got a phone call from one of my friends, one of my mentors. He said the same. He said something funny to me. He said, "Charles, would you quit arguing with this guy who averaged two points a game in college?" <laughs> You know how hard it is to average two points? Because, Mike, if you... Yeah, like, I just want to see the game. I don't care about that. This is retarded. Like, you can't even... You can't even, like, record right if you have a lot of apps running behind the scene on OBS, but I don't have any apps running. Like, that's a problem. Like, that's, that's like, the only issue with my computer. And I have a good computer. Like, I don't... I don't get that. Um, but technically, I guess, like, to really... If you play MJ one-on-one on one for real, yes. you really think something good would happen? Because I think... Uh-oh. Oh! oh come on. If, if this was... Come on. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> this is just super bad. But, um... All right. Uh... This is... This is... Dude, I'm even... big dog! Yeah, this isn't even compiling right, but, um, yeah, like, I'll just, like, restart my computer. That's, that's usually how it goes down with most of my, with most of my shit, but, um, basically to sum it up, um, LeVar Ball and his dynasty with Lonzo, um, is gonna be really big. I can see a lot of things happening if Lonzo remains to be healthy. Um, I really do think that the Ball Brothers will get bigger. Um, do I think Lonzo could ever surpass Seth Curry? I mean, it's possible. We've seen it with a bunch of rookies that have that have beaten out stars. Uh, obviously, LeBron James versus Kobe. That was one of by far the best matchups um, ever in the history of man in the NBA. To see a rookie, you know, put up as good numbers up against Kobe, so. Why can't Lonzo do it? Why can't he pull off a Derrick Rose and try to actually bang shots at a higher degree? Do I think Lonzo could really get bigger in the NBA? I think it would be very possible. Lonzo just needs to maintain his health and then again, just practice more, get bigger. Um, I, I do say that in college, um, he looks a little bit more bigger and I really do hope that UCLA makes it further within the NCAA tournament, so that way Lonzo can shock the crowd more with his abilities on 
on maintaining a better um, build for his for his uh, draft staff. But um, I'm going to make more videos, and I'll catch you guys around. And Lanza Ball, all day. Peace.